take even eye drops. Stop taking Spiriva and seek immediate medical help if your breathing suddenly worsens, your throat or tongue swells, you get hives, vision changes, or eye pain. This is a KHOU 11 News breaking news report. And right now you are taking a live look uh, right around southwest Houston. A police chase, police chasing a gray van uh, right now southeast Houston. Uh, the gray van is on the south loop eastbound approaching the Woodridge exit. You see several police cars behind that van right now. They're going about 60 miles an hour down the uh, freeway right there, the highway there. Obviously the cars not really getting in the way of that gray van. We're not sure quite yet what uh, this person is, is running from, who's in the car, but uh, we just got word that this has been going on. Uh, at this point, they're approaching Telephone Road, and they are going about 60 miles an hour, so at this point, it hasn't reached high speeds. But you see there that they are right behind that van, and they're pretty keeping a, a steady pace. They're crossing over 45 at this point, and again, standing back, and it appears as if there aren't too many cars or trucks in front of that van. There he is passing a car there. We, uh, we do believe that this is a robbery suspect. Police now chasing a robbery suspect in that gray van. And uh, just again, keeping a steady pace at 60 miles an hour. Fortunately there, there aren't too many cars on the road. Um, it started it as a surveillance on this guy. Police were doing surveillance on this guy, a robbery suspect, and he fled when he tried to, uh, when police tried to pull him over. So it appears as if there was one person, a man, a robbery suspect in that gray van traveling about 60 miles an hour. Police right behind him, several police cars you see, and uh, to the right and left of him you see cars definitely staying away, giving that driver some space there. This police chase started about 30 minutes ago when officers were doing surveillance on that suspect in the gray van, again, the robbery suspect. Right now he is eastbound on the loop in the left-hand lane. And you can see there that uh, some of the cars getting out of his way. We do know that uh, the speed yet has, has not reached more than about 60 miles an hour, but it does appear as if at this point he is picking up the pace there. He's now headed northbound and uh, on the loop, and you can see that he is making some headway there, but officers speeding up as well as he goes down the way. And uh, there is no one in front of that car, so people definitely making way for him. We learned about this chase again a few minutes ago. It's been going on about 30 minutes, a robbery suspect. And uh, now police are giving him even more room. He's potentially picking up speed there as he goes down in southeast Houston. At this point, he's approaching the Ship Channel Bridge. And if we see that wide shot, there are some cars on the road. But fortunately, not too much traffic. One o'clock in the afternoon just past the rush hour, the lunch rush hour, as he goes down in southeast Houston. Police there going in front of him as he passes over that ship channel area. You can see the water off to the side there. He's now heading into east Houston. What do we have there? About six police cars behind him as he goes down. Haven't heard yet if there has been any sort of activity from inside the car if he's potentially on the phone talking to someone he is now approaching i-10 eastbound police right on his tail there he he doesn't appear to be driving that crazy police are keeping his distance a lot of the times we do see Chases in which speeds reach about 100 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour. This guy appears to be going just about 60 miles an hour. And police are giving him some space there. Not too much space, but enough space to keep on going. We are told that's a robbery suspect. Police doing some sort of surveillance. What at this point we don't know. We're not sure too much more information about that robbery. But there you see him crossing some lanes. So he could be trying to leave.
get off, find some sort of exit, but he is definitely moving around now, trying to maneuver through those cars, picking up some pace, and police officers also picking up pace as well. You can see there that one of the officers appears to be getting on uh, one of the sides as he drives down, but uh, not ramming into any cars. So at this point, at this point, I say it seems to be peaceful, but uh, he does have a, a lot of road to go, and we're not obviously sure how long police will let him go without trying to do some sort of tactic, whether it's putting down stop sticks or something like that. But there you see a school bus going by and uh, does appear again to be picking up some pace they started chasing this gray minivan around 35 minutes ago. There you see someone speeding by there. But uh, about 35 minutes ago, robbery suspect inside that van. We believe it's a man inside there. And we do understand now that officers are working on laying out spikes to try to stop him, try to get him off the road. Not too much information again about the uh, suspect in the car, but we do believe he is alone. And uh, there you see how he is going he started in uh, southeast houston then went into east houston passed over the ship channel and now it appears that he is going off potentially trying to uh, get off although the officers now are picking up speed behind him he is now going underneath i-10 still on the loop as about six police cars follow him closely behind and again, we do understand that they are trying to lay out stop sticks, preparing for him as he goes down I-10. We do see that there aren't too many cars on the road, a couple of trucks or so. Uh, there we go. Right there, you see the officer lay out the stop sticks. We see officers slowing down. Did it slow him down? It appears it is slowing him down a bit. The gray minivan, robbery suspect. We do think they missed, but it, it does appear that he is slowing down a bit, but we did just see officers try to throw out those stop sticks. And then right there, a closer look from Air 11. Uh, fortunately, it does not look that they, like those stop sticks or s s sticks worked. Those tires seem to be intact. He is continuing on the loop in the fast lane as police officers try to follow him and keep an eye on him as he goes down I-10. So there we see some officers. He's about to uh, cross over Wallaceville, but then we see a couple of officers again right there laying out the stop six. Again, it appears they missed. He just keeps on going just past that wayside exit as he continues down I-10. So far that we know of, he has managed to get by two attempts to throw those sticks through there. If you're just joining us now, there is what we believe Actually, it looks like they may have gotten the back tire with those stop sticks as he's slowing down a bit. This robbery suspect, one man to be believed to be in that gray minivan going down I-10 for the last 40 minutes or so. With there, we see four police cars following him closely behind. We've seen two attempts to use stop sticks, and we do believe that that second attempt, that last attempt that we just saw, that may have worked. Right now he's approaching the North Loop near Wayside, still going down I-10. It appears he is still continuing at that speed of about 60 miles an hour. That's what we believe. Um, as we've watched throughout this chase, we have seen that it has remained peaceful, if a chase you can call it peaceful, but you do see some cars on the road, but he definitely is staying in the fast lane, and uh, some of the other cars on the road are giving him space. Right now, he is passing the Kirkpatrick exit. You can see the sign there as he goes down I-10. Now we see six police cars still. They still remain behind him, and he remains in the fast lane going down I-10. This is a robbery suspect. They were doing some sort of surveillance when he took off and started in southeast Houston, now through east Houston. There you see a bit of a closer look. He's, he is now heading up towards Homestead and Lockwood. And there is a wider picture there. You see that there aren't too many cars in front of him. The next major highway that he's coming towards is 59. So uh, we see what will happen there. But there you see some officers possibly ready to put stop sticks down again. 
as he approaches there they go and he missed again missed for the third time that is the third time that he put down those stop sticks on the freeway there now moving from the uh the left lane the fast lane maybe trying to get away from those police cars that he believes may have stop sticks this is chase now going a little bit over 40 minutes started in southeast houston went through east houston he's just past the Lockwood exit on I-10, and he's been keeping a steady speed of about 60 miles an hour as he stays in that fast lane. One thing we haven't seen, and it's a good thing, is that many of those other cars on the road, trucks and cars, have stayed out of this man's way. At this point, he just crossed Lockwood. You see officers again giving him space, not too much space. There you see he passes the uh, Hirsch Road exit. This all started as surveillance of a robbery suspect near the Katy Freeway. And now he's ended up on I-10 passing Wayside and Lockwood and there uh, passing the uh, 59 exit towards downtown. At this point he's approaching the East Tex Freeway interchange, continuing on the loop as he goes down the highway, going through these streets, the highways of Houston. At this point, he's on the North Loop westbound and just crossed the 59 interchange, and it appears police are standing, staying back a little. He may be picking up speed, but it appears at this point that there seems to be more traffic. Lots of traffic congestion coming up, so uh, we're gonna have to see what happens here because he has had a lot of space during this entire time that he's been running from officers and now he's going to run into some problems he did miss those stop sticks but now look at this we've got some some traffic here we have got several cars he's really going to have to maneuver through this going out of the fast lane moving side to side so uh gosh hope he's going to be safe out there not safe but uh courteous to the other drivers on the road uh at this point, he's approaching the Hardy Toll Road. There you saw a truck that was actually pulled over. Right now, it looks like he has a little more space as he's going down the highway there. A little more room to move. For a second there, there was some traffic, but uh, he is getting a little ahead of officers right now. We do understand now that we're getting word that possibly other agencies are getting involved to try to stop this this guy, this robbery suspect, who's been running now for over 40 minutes, starting in southeast Houston, now where he is, and it appears as if there is a bit more traffic here. There was some traffic, he got a little space, but now he is still heading westbound there. And uh, he just crossed over Irvington. There are some more cars on the road there. But you do see those police officers in, and we're told now that this could be a bank robbery suspect. We had heard that it was a robbery suspect, now possibly a, uh, a bank robbery suspect. And we understand that he may have discarded a cash bag, may have discarded a cash bag before this chase started. Uh, again, we're told that this started with uh, some surveillance video or surveillance of this suspect and he took off running and then got in his car and now he's making his way through the streets there. Um, there he is there going around a loop and uh, officers just, he just took the I-45 exit headed southbound on I-45. Officers next to him. This is where he could run into some more traffic. I-45, Len Cannon uh, joining. Now, uh, I-45, more of, uh, of a little more congestion, more traffic. Yeah, these are always uh, big problems, as you know, Courtney, and as I understand it, to set down 20, 25 minutes this has been going on. Uh, uh, maybe about 40, 40, a little over 40 minutes. And as a potential robbery suspect, uh, as always is the case in these matters police try and be very careful uh, trying to end this with without uh, this is on 45 south uh, repeating again they try to end these situations uh, without causing an accident with other vehicles uh, either through spike strips 
uh, primarily through that, or they try and box the car in, but only, as you know, Courtney, they only do that when there is a, a clear opportunity to do so without getting other cars getting involved. Southbound 45 now approaching a cavalcade, not far from the downtown area, and here it is around lunchtime. So we'll have to see how police monitor this. They always try and get this thing over with. They always do end, especially if it's a chase during the day, uh, just under underneath cottage. But they always end uh, in some sort of fashion. Primarily, they end peacefully. And we hope that this will be the case this time as well, that nobody gets hit, no other cars uh, are hit, and, uh, and everything ends peacefully. So we'll watch. And so far, three attempts of uh, spike strips that uh, has not worked. So they'll keep trying to do that until they can uh, either this person either runs out of gas, runs out of nerve, or, or just gives up. So we'll have to watch this very, very closely. Right. And he is continuing southbound on I-45. And Len, one thing that we have seen, and you spoke uh, again, approaching I-10 right here, one thing that we have seen, they have stood back. They have tried not to cause more activity than our, uh, already has those three attempts of stop sticks. Uh, again, that van, minivan, uh, potentially a robbery suspect. He may have discarded a bag before this chase started in uh, southeast Houston. Officers doing some sort of surveillance on this driver. During this whole chase, he's mainly or, or stayed in the left lane, moving back and forth between those lanes. What we haven't seen is a lot of traffic, but there we see officers throwing another. Looks like he missed. He did miss. That would be the fourth attempt at stop sticks. Yeah, that's, it's very difficult uh, when they're traveling at that rate of speed uh, to get those spike strips down, get those tires knocked out as this uh, driver continues to move. And, and I should say, uh, apparently, appears to be driving somewhat cautiously under the circumstances, isn't weaving dangerously in and out of traffic. Now looks like the driver's picking up some speed uh, as he approaches into the uh, Pierce elevated area. And let's see, police are still hovering back, waiting for an opportunity. People always ask, you know, well, why don't they just go get him? Well, when you go get them, then you create problems for all these other drivers, <clears throat> excuse me, that are on the highway. If you try and box them in at a high rate of speed, you don't want that car or a police car spinning out of control, uh, crashing into innocent drivers. So uh, that's why they hold off and wait till they get the right opportunity or wait till this person uh, just decides to give up. Uh, Still southbound on 45, crossing over uh, Buffalo Bayou, yeah. Allen Parkway. To me, it looks like he's having trouble with one of his tires. It could be from the angle that I'm looking at right here. Could be the but, right, uh, Courtney, I think you're right. Your front right, right rear. tire. Is it front right or front right, right rear? Front right or right side. It looks like it's leaning a little. Yeah, they may have done some damage so to that, that tire. Let's yeah. hope this guy... Uh, uh, gives up. Do we know if it's a man or a woman behind we the wheel? We believe it's a man uh, just crossing West Dallas. Uh, we believe it's a man, a robbery suspect in the car alone. Those windows are very tinted, though, so we really don't know what is uh, or who is inside. But uh, officers are telling us that a uh, potential robbery suspect in there, one man alone in the gray minivan. Yeah, this is always a lot of drama as this uh, driver, believed to be a bank robbery suspect, as you have mentioned, uh, now uh, on 45 South through downtown along the Pierce Elevated, uh, I believe now beyond the split for 59 and 288, which means the driver would continue to go uh, southbound. Uh, and so, but it looks like, as Courtney was mentioning, that a tire may be out. Hard to tell, but it does look like it as we lose a picture here momentarily. But police will continue to track this driver, bank robbery suspect, and hopefully be able to end this thing without any issues. The other thing that police have to keep in mind, of course, is whether this person is armed. Uh, that's why they also hold back. It presents a whole different set of circumstances. As again, we go back to the scene. You can see one, two, three, at least five uh, police cars now following this van, bank robbery suspect on 45, uh, we had surveillance apparently on this person uh, by police about an hour ago and police are now uh, you know they're just hanging in there and now he's going southbound on 45 he's going to be near the spur near u of h in this area uh, continue to drive south no indication this is scott 45 and scott no indication that this driver wants to pull over, wants to give up, so police are going to have to apparently do this the hard way, uh, either spike strips 
or box this vehicle in when they get an opportunity. And now I'm told that the suspect is believed to be armed. Even more reason to uh, stand back at this point. The speeds that we've seen this throughout this chase, about 60 miles an hour. This chase starting about uh, 1220 this afternoon. Right now he is going over Scott. Six police cars have been following him throughout this chase, and we have seen four attempts at putting down stop sticks. For most of this, uh, this chase, uh, the police officers have stayed just behind this robbery suspect, but they uh, are following very closely behind, but definitely have given him uh, some space. He is still southbound on the Gulf Freeway, and for most of the time here, he has stayed in that left lane this point he's going to come up on slow traffic. One thing we haven't seen is a lot of traffic, so he is coming up on slow traffic. And this Ooh. could create uh, either a mess or an opportunity for police officers. So let's see how they handle it because I have to dovetail in behind. Now keep in mind, these drivers, a lot of them, they may be clueless as to what is going on. So let's see how police proceed here. They're going to stay in their cars. They're going to continue to follow. And the driver is not pulling over, not stopping, going with the traffic and police now single file behind the driver of this gray minivan, a bank robbery suspect, now on the run for about 40 minutes. Uh, the person was under surveillance. That's when police started to chase him uh, after it was known that he was a suspect. Now the cars come to a complete He's stop. He's boxed in. There and is a Suburban in front of him. So an let's see, wheeler. I'm curious if police will take advantage. They, own, they will only do so if there's a clear, now here we oh, go. Oh, door open. Let's see what happens. Went past and went past several officers. Now notice the officers are not, the door is open, but the officers did not make an attempt there. It's too risky, too many other vehicles, too many other people involved. So this person clearly very desperate. Don't know why uh, the person uh, opened the car door, but now speeding out of uh, the traffic, continuing southbound now on the Gulf Freeway. Uh, police will continue to follow here and let's watch. Looks like the front tire, you were right, Courtney, the front tire uh, spike strip is coming again, but it looks like they got one of the tires. So at some point, uh, this person is not, this man is not going to be able to continue to drive. Uh, that, that rim will just start to shred, and, and he's just not going to be able to go very fast. And, and now he's getting off. He's exiting right now. Again, this man is armed. Oh, and look, he, telephone road exit. It looks like part of the tire just flew off. This is yeah. the first time we've seen him off the freeway since this started. Yeah, I, I would bet that we're close to the end here. See that the he's on the rims there. So this is Southeast Houston off the Gulf Freeway. Just got off the telephone road exit coming up to the light there. And let's see. OK, he's uh, making a right or we got before telephone. Looks like he made a turn or is that telephone? Can't really tell. But now we're in a neighborhood and so this poses another set of circumstances for police officers. Um, see if they try and get an, if they get an opportunity to box the driver in. Uh, these things are always uh, fascinating to watch, but very uh, dangerous because of the potential of other people uh, getting hit in their own vehicles. Uh, so police try to be very careful here. They are not allowed, according to uh, HPD policy, to bump a vehicle and try and knock them out of control. They've stopped doing that. They will box a car in as soon as they get a, a certain opportunity and they will lay down spike strips and hope that the car is incapacitated and can't go anymore. And that looks like uh, we are close to that. You can see the smoke coming from the rim. I don't uh, think he can go much further, but this, this, this person is desperate and still driving on that right front rim, still going. You know, I've seen that door open. Oh, both tires on the right side are blown, but uh, you keep seeing him open that door. We do know he's armed, so I'm sure that's one thing officers would be concerned about to stay back. He has been opening that door, and we are told by officers that he is armed. Robbery suspect who has been running from police for almost an hour now. And you can only imagine the backstory here, what the possibilities are. If it's an armed robbery suspect uh, who is just past our Old Spanish Trail, by the way, uh, could be somebody uh, even more desperate. Maybe they've already done time. We don't know. Uh, but uh, it creates a, a circumstance where it looks like even with two blown tires on the right side of the car because of the spike strips by police, this driver refuses to give up, indicating a high level of desperation. And uh, we believe he's now on Old Spanish Trail. So police will have to just be patient here. It's now been about 45 minutes, 
and hope that this can just come to an end. Once the driver decides to stop or cannot drive anymore because of those two blown tires as he approaches Scott now, then we'll see how they handle it. They will react depending on how the robbery suspect reacts. If he gets out and gets down on the ground as he's told, game over. If he decides to run, then their chase is on. Uh, if he's got a weapon uh, and, and decides to use it, then it's a whole other ball game. So a lot of different scenarios and circumstances that can happen here. But continuing now on Old Spanish Trail, police close by with both tires blown on the right side and no indication that the robbery suspect wants to slow down or stop. That's right, and he has been going now for uh, about an hour as he spent most of the time on highways and freeways, but this is the first time we have seen him on the streets. He just passed Colin, and he is now headed towards Reliant. Uh, so this robbery suspect has made his way around the city of Houston this afternoon. And we'll see if the police get another opportunity for a spike strip. Two tires blown, not enough. Maybe they'll try one more time to get those other tires blown. You can see this driver, he's speeding up now, but on Old Spanish Trails, already past Cullen, uh, already crossed Scott, headed towards Reliant, picking up speed. Uh, I don't know how that's possible with two blown tires and driving on rims, but where there's a will, there's a way in this situation. So uh, we'll continue to follow it. You can see there, see the tires? And Gone. there's also some damage to the uh, front end there that I didn't see before. Maybe it was because the uh, camera was back, but it does look like there's some damage to his, the side of the minivan there as he continues down Old Spanish Trail. Stops, uh, the sticks must have really done something to those tires, but he has not slowed down in any way. He yeah. continues to go through and uh, make his way through traffic. You can only account, uh, Courtney, for, you know, you, you take the tires out and you, and you know what physically that will do, that will, what that will do to the vehicle, uh, but you cannot account for where this person is at uh, mentally, psychologically, how desperate they are, uh, refusing to give up, even with two blown tires. So they're taking all of that information into account, how long this has taken, and they know they've got somebody who is suspected to be armed. So on top of that, uh, they're going to be very careful as they approach the vehicle. And now we understand there may be one, more than one person in the minivan with what we believed was one robbery suspect. Now we're told there could be more than one person in that minivan. Again, those, those windows, the back and the front, very dark. So we really don't know how many people are inside that car. But we do know officers believe that at least one person is in there, possibly two, and we know at least one of them, they believe, is armed. Yeah, the police probably have a good idea since they've already tried four attempts at spike strips that have worked to some, uh, to some case, but they've probably been close enough to know. Look at that. Look at the smoke on the right front tire now. He's and they now northbound, turned off Old Spanish Trail, southbound now northbound on Del Rio, and the police probably have an idea that there's more than one person. Let's hope that this person pulls over and just gets down on the ground. Uh, we, we believe there could be one and um, possibly two, but again, we, uh, we have confirmed at least one, obviously, because they're dri driver. We really don't know how many people are in that van just because of how dark those windows are. But uh, we do see one officer following close. When he was on the highway, uh, there was about six police cars. So yeah, they're now they're there. single file. Mm -hmm. Tight quarters here. You know, you, you just want to say, just give up. I mean, you, you, you can't get away at this point. There's nowhere for you to go. Uh, you know, you create in a situation that it has escalated. Uh, just stop the car and get out. But, the, you know, you just, people are desperate. So, and look how slow this Very driver's slow. going. Typically in this situation, what we've seen in the past with other chases, they, they some stop, decide to stop, take off running. So eventually this, this chase in, in a vehicle could turn into a, a foot chase. And uh, that just gets scary. I mean, yeah. when, when people are running around, we know that this person is, is armed. So we're now in a residential area, I believe still the southeast Houston area. Oftentimes, uh, since this has gone on as long as it has, and you can see two blown tires on the right uh, and the right uh, rear view, uh, the right mirror there uh, off. <laughs> Look at that, just all rims there on the front. No tire there. Uh, and so continuing to drive, but if uh, they may have uh, HPD dogs uh, also tailing, 
uh, as a, in, in case that this person stops and makes a run for it. This is McGregor approaching Scott. Eventually he is going to have to stop because he is not going to get much, much further on, on those tires or, or rims. There is no rubber left on that right side. And we do see damage there with the side mirror. So as he makes his way through a residential neighborhood, he is going to eventually have to stop. Uh, the speed's obviously a lot slower in these neighborhoods. Officers coming from different directions. Mm -hmm. At this point, he's southbound on Scott. What we've seen so far from officers is five attempts to throw stop sticks. Those have obviously worked. At this point, approaching 90, and uh, they did work because you do see the right side tires. Yeah, they've done their job, but you can't account for what a person is thinking. Now, southbound on Scott, approaching Old Spanish Trail once again. So this person has doubled back uh, to where he was before. Again, if you're just joining us, Robbery suspect, now been uh, running from the police for nearly an hour. Uh, he was under surveillance. We believe that this suspect is armed. Uh, spike strips have worked, but they have not worked enough to make this person stop driving. The two right tires blown. Uh, the driver on rims on the two right side and one mirror on the right side of the car is dangling. Several officers in pursuit. Uh, 40 miles an hour, we're told, is the estimated speed. So this person continues to drive, and this draws out. If you're a police officer, it's a very frustrating thing. There uh, goes the rim. There goes the rim. So let's see if that makes a difference. He's now driving with even less than no rubber. Yeah, at this rate, he's going to be on the brakes. Uh, so he's on three wheels going down as uh, he's running into some cars there. Uh, he gets through the cars. He just crossed Yellowstone on three tires, smoke coming from the rim of that front. And there's, got tra there's traffic ahead, we understand. Maybe, I don't know, maybe an opportunity, but given the fact that we believe the suspect is armed, and you see people standing out there. It, it appears, because I saw that a, a little while back, it appears as if people are waiting for this chase to come through, like maybe they've been watching it on, on TV because you see people watching. Uh, at this point, he's continuing on Scott, and he's approaching the loop again. Yeah, unfolding drama. These police chases are always filled with drama. Sometimes uh, they're, look at that, smoke and uh, fire now coming off I don't know what I don't know what he's driving on. Uh, we do see some, uh, yeah. It's smoke not the coming. rim is gone on the front right tire. Now here we go. Let's see if this is enough to get him to stop. Let's follow the drama. See if the driver gets out, makes a run, or gets down on the ground. Car can't go anymore. It's Police smoking. will approach carefully. Let's see here. Two dry, right. two people in the car. One runs. The other's giving up. Here goes the chase for the driver. And he is running southbound running from police towards a park you wonder if police officers are in the area you're, you're pretty sure well, they are. there we go there's this, some officers this, this, there yeah okay there we hands go hands in the air all right unbelievable okay that was you know if, from our perspective it's 45 minutes of a waste of time because it, the, the, these people cannot get away in the middle of the day and you've got two blown tires and you put all these people at risk and now officers have at the end of the chase, this is the driver. He got out and ran maybe 30 yards and then gave up in a park, southeast Houston. There are the police dogs that I was referring to. The other person, the passenger in the car, got out and immediately surrendered. So these are bank robbery suspects on the run now for some 50 minutes, and this is what it led to, a capture, and it's over. A peaceful capture, two people in custody, all along, there were two people in that car. This chase starting around 1220 in southeast Houston. Police doing surveillance. Spotted these bank robbery suspects. And they drove, went through five different attempts at stop sticks. Two right tires out throughout this chase. But now the two suspects in custody after an hour-long chase all over Houston. Yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible. And you can see the number of police officers of course, when you have a chase that goes this long, 45, 50 minutes, they've got plenty of time to mobilize. So that's where you have so many officers. We are looking live in the parking lot of this park in southeast Houston off Scott, uh, where the suspect is on the ground, the driver, 
Uh, we're not seeing the other person who was in the passenger seat because that, that man didn't run, but this guy foolishly decided to run and police have him down. You can see the uh, police dog, that's either a German Shepherd or a Belgian Malinois that they use in these situations. And so the person is down on the ground, cuffed. Uh, soon they'll uh, get the driver up. And uh, again, after an hour long chase, two suspects, bank robbery suspects, who we believe were armed in custody. Chase that lasted an hour, ended peacefully. Fortunately, no one hurt, but there you take a look at that minivan. Oof. Yeah, destroyed. So that's the end of a very long chase. No other people hurt, no pedestrians, no other innocent drivers. That is the good news. We'll continue to stay on top of this story, have all the highlights and the details for you coming up on 11 News, KHOU 11 News at 4 o'clock, and of course, constant updates at KHOU.com. This has been a KHOU 11 News breaking news report.